Welcome. This is Unit 5, Lesson 8. Today we will be, our, our target goal is that I can solve division problems where both the div dividend and the divisor are decimal numbers. We're going to do this by using money examples to see the way digits in a decimal number shift to the left when the number is divided by one-tenth, one-hundredth, and one-thousandth, and by discussing and applying a strategy for solving problems that have a decimal, dividend, and divisor. So if you have money that you want to use, you really also might need something else to represent a of a cent or one thousandth of a dollar. But you could even use different items to represent all of it if you like too. But real money would make it more fun because everybody likes money. Okay. So first let's do a quick review. How do the digits shift when we divide by one tenth, one hundredth, and one thousandth? For example, how do the digits in the dividend these digits right here shift when we divide by these decimals. And you are correct. The digits shift to the left. When we divide when we divide by one tenth, these digits digit digits shift one place to the left. So I will be getting, I will attach a zero to shift it to the, the digits to the left because it's the same as multiplying by 10. When you divide by 100th, each of these digits will shift one, two places to the left because it's the same as multiplying by 100. So I have to attach two zeros to sh shift them to the left. Yeah, I know I can't write very well with my mouse pad. 52 divided by a thousandth would shift each digit one, two, three places to the left because it's the same as multiplying by a thousand. So, to shift each digit Three places to the left, attaching a zero shifts some one, attaching a zero shifts some two, and attaching a zero shifts some three. More than four digits, I have to have my decimal. All right, so now moving on to our new learning. What do you think would happen if we had a decimal in our dividend and our divisor? So now we have a decimal point right here in our dividend as well as the decimal in our divisor. So take a moment and think about what do you think is going to happen? I bet you were right. The digits are still going to shift left. So even though they're in the decimal place, they're still going to shift left. So when I divide by one tenth, each of these digits shifts one place to the left. So, the digits were here. Now, I don't know if I can do this, but I'll give it a try. And to shift to the left, oh, no, the three is attached to my decimal. I'm going to try something here. Let's show you something. Oh, sorry about that. It's going a little crazy on me. Oop, back down here. All right, let's try this. So, To start with, the decimal's there. But when I shift the six, one place to the tens, the three, oh, they're both gonna come together. And the three 
and the four, the three goes from the tenths to the ones, and the four goes from the hundreds to the thousands, it just makes the number 10 times greater because it's the same as multiplying by 10. And when we multiplied a decimal by 10, each digit shifted one place left. So it really isn't much different. When we divide by a thousandth, I bet you figured this out. Each digit is going to shift two places to the left, or basically our decimal point is going to shift two places to the right and end up there. 634. Because dividing by one hundredth, is the same as multiplying by 100, and we multiply a number by 100, the digits shift two places to the left. And the same is going to happen when we divide by a thousand. Dividing by a thousand is the same as multiplying by a thousand. Dividing by a thousandth, I have a th at the end, I don't know how well that picks up on my microphone, is the same as multiplying by 1,000 with a nd at the end. So I'm going to shift each digit three places to the left. So my six is going to start in the ones, and my three started in the tens, and my four in the hundreds. My six is going to go from the ones to the tens, to the hundreds, to the thousands. My three is going to go from the tens to the ones, to the tens, to the hundredths. And my four is gonna go from the hundredths, to the tenths, to the ones, to the tens. Now, how do I make that four in the tens? I have to attach a zero. And I look at it this way. Each digit shifted one, here's where, each digit is shifting three places to the left. My decimal point was there, and it sh by shifting the digits, I shift my decimal once uh, to the right. One, two, three places, but we don't write a decimal at the end of a number. So it becomes 6,340. Each digit shifted one place, two places, three places. If I don't have a third place, I attach a zero. So dividing a decimal by a decimal, remember when you're dividing by a decimal, it's the same as multiplying by, or by a decimal that is a factor of 10, it's the same as multiplying by that 10. So let's take a look at page 219. If you don't have your book, pause before I answer any question or write it in your notebook, pause before I answer a question so you have time to write it in. Well, even if you have your book, pause. All right, if you have money, now's the time to use it. Here we go. In a math situation, a company, it costs them 31 and 2 10 cents or 312 thousandths of a dollar to make a cat's eye marble. The money is shown here. So, kind of like gas prices when they have a 9 tenths of a cent. So, th 31 and 2 tenths or 312 hundredths of a dollar. All right. Now, Answer each question about the coins. How many dimes or 10 cents does it cost to make one cat's eye marble? So we start with three dimes, a penny, and two tenths of a penny. In dimes, look what we have. We have three whole dimes, a penny is a tenth of a dime, and two tenths of a penny are two hundredths of a dime if you look over here. So when we take three and twelve hundredths and divide by one tenth, how much does it end up costing? Or how many dimes would it be? 
you're right. There are three and twelve hundredths of a dime. And if you look close, what happened? The digits all shifted one place to the left. So what happened to the cost? It becomes 10 times as great. When you divide by 100 or 1 tenth, does each digit shift to the left or the right or the left and why? Which direction did the digit shift and why? That's right. They shifted left because dividing by 1 tenth is the same as multiplying by 10. How many places does each digit shift and why? How many places did each sh digit shift? That's right, they each went one place because each place value is multiplied by 10. Okay, and let's move on to the next page. So 220, and again, pause the video whenever you need to to answer questions before I give the answer. How many pennies or one hundredth of a dollar does it cost to make one cat's eye marble? So when we change them all into pennies, we take three, 112 thousandths of a dollar divided by one hundredth because a penny is one hundredth of a dollar. It ends up taking how many pennies? You guessed it. Actually, you didn't guess it. You figured it out. 31 and two tenths pennies. What happens to the number that shows the cost? Okay, so the number went from 312 thousandths what happened to that number? That's right, it became 100 times as great. Three, 31 and 2 tenths is 100 times as great as 312 thousandths. So when we divide by 100, does each digit shift to the right or left and why? So which direction did each digit go and why? Good job, they each went left, because dividing by one hundredth is the same as multiplying by a hundred. How many places does each digit shift and why? That is also correct. They each went two places because each place is multiplied by a hundred. The tens, tenths got multiplied by a hundred, the hundreds got multiplied by a hundred, and the thousands got multiplied by a hundred. All right, let's move on to tenths. And now if you're using any money, now you have to use things that represent it. All right, how many tenths of a cent or thousandth of a dollar does it cost to make one cat's eye marble? So we're thinking 312 thousandths divided by a thousandth. And it ends up being 312 tenths of a cent. What happened to the number that shows the cost? The number went from 312 thousandths to 312. So what happened to it? That's right, it becomes 1,000 times greater. When you divide by 1,000, does each digit shift to the right or the left? How many places and why? So each digit went which way and why? Good job. They each went left three places because dividing by a thousandth is the same as multiplying by 1,000. And each place is being multiplied by a thousand. That's why each digit stays in the same order, same distance apart. Are the shift patterns for dividing by a tenth one hundredth and a thousandth the same when the product or your dividend is a decimal number as when the product or dividend is a whole number. Why or why not? Basically, they're asking is, is the shift pattern the same whether you are dividing a decimal by a decimal 
or you're dividing a whole number by a de decimal. Pause the video, figure, think about it, make a good complete answer. Use some good vocabulary here. Use shift and multiply. And I'm, I don't want to give away some of the other good words, but use good vocabulary. All right, welcome back. Here's the reveal of my answer. Yes, dividing by a tenth, one hundredth, and a thousandth is the same as multiplying by ten, one hundred, and a thousand. So the digit digit shift will be the same whether the dividend is a whole number or a decimal. So it doesn't matter. Either way, it's just the same. So really, we're not learning anything new here. We're just starting to apply it to division. That's all. Okay. So putting this into action, the strategy, changing decimal dividers to whole numbers. To divide a decimal by a decimal, use the same strategy you use when you divide a whole number by a decimal. So here are the steps used to find six hundredths divided by two hundredths. First, write six hundredths divided by two tenths as a fraction. And you're gonna have to bear with me because you know what it's like on here. So, six hundredths divided by two tenths would be that as a fraction. Now, make an equivalent fraction with a whole number divisor by multiplying six hundredths divide six hundredths two tenths by one in the form of ten tenths. So what I'm doing is I'm going to multiply it by one, but I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna to try to take a shortcut here. Bear with me, guys. Hold on, sorry about that. But I'm going to multiply six hundredths of uh, two tenths by one in the form of. 10 tenths, making the equivalent fraction six tenths, because multiplying by 10 shifts the digit one place to the left, so the six goes to the tenths, and multiplying two tenths by 10 makes it two because if we remember last lesson we want to divide by a whole number don't we so what do i end up with i end up with this equivalent fraction can now get changed back into division six tenths divided by Two. Boom. So why does six hundredths divided by two tenths have the same answer as six tenths divided by two? And now I'm going to reveal my answer. See if you were correct. The fractions six tenths. halves and six hundredths two tenths are equivalent. So the division problems six tenths divided by two and six hundredths divided by two must also be equivalent. Basically because 
the fractions are equivalent, the division expressions are equivalent and give the same answer. Let me show you the steps now when you're doing it in long division because that's how we're going to really be working them out. So the steps that you should use set up the problem. So we have six hundredths Oh, that's not easy. Divided by two tenths. Multiply both numbers by 10. This shifts the digits one place left. Show this by moving the decimal point one place to the right. So, I'm going to multiply 2 tenths by 10, and I'm going to multiply 6 hundredths by 10 by shifting each digit one place left by shifting each decimal point one place to the right. Now, they say you don't have to draw ar arrows. We could put carrots to show where each new decimal point belongs. So basically what they're saying is instead of drawing the arrow, I could have just made a carrot here and a carrot there. But if you remember, what I prefer to do, and it's not so easy with this, but I like to just rewrite the problem. I have six tenths divided by two. And now I can just work out the quotient, 0 divided by 2, 0, bring up my decimal, 6 tenths divided in half would be 3 tenths, 3 multiplied by 2 would be 6 tenths, and I would have nothing left. So, after I read the question, pause the video, because I will then reveal it. Why does moving both decimal points the same number of places give a problem with the same answer as the original problem? Remember, think about using good vocabulary, like pretend you have a little brother or sister and you want to explain it to them. So but use good, correct vocabulary as well. So why is moving both decimal points the same number of places give the problem with the same answer as the original? Why does 6 tenths divided by 2 give me the same answer as 6 hundredths divided by 2 tenths? Welcome back. Let's see how you did. Moving the digits, hopefully use the word digits, the same number of places, hope you use the word places, is the same as making an equivalent fraction. And definitely I hope you use the words equivalent fraction. All right. So what I like to call it is it's an equivalent division equation because they would be equivalent division or equivalent fractions. They also make equivalent division equations. Now go to page 222. I'm gonna slowly scroll down so you can see all the problems. What you should do is do the, pay, do the problems and then unpause the video and watch or look, check it with my answers.
Okay, welcome back. How would you find six hundredths divided by two hundredths with long division? What number do you need to multiply both numbers by to make two hundredths a whole number? And their answer is multiply six hundredths and two hundredths by one hundred. The new problem is six divided by two. All right, because I need to shift my digits one, two places to the left to make this a whole number. So I have to shift these digits two places to the left. And that would mean multiplying by 100. Multiplying each one by 100. And I do have a six and a two, six divided by two left. How would you find six hundredths divided by two thousandths with long division? What number do you need to multiply both numbers to make two hundredths a whole number? Well, to make two hundredths a whole number, I have to multiply by 10, 100, 1,000. And if I multiply my divisor by 1,000, to make an equivalent fraction and equivalent division problem, I have to multiply my dividend by a thousand. So one, that's 10, 100. Oh, I need to put in an extra zero. So let's reveal how they put it. Multiply six hundredths and two thousandths by one thousand. The new problem is 60. Do I have 60? Six zero divided by two. Can you see why it makes a lot of sense for me to rewrite this problem when I do it? 60 divided by two. Looks a lot easier than doing that, doesn't it? All right. In fact, it ends up being mental math. All right, like I've done before, here were four problems that you should have done. If not, pause your uh, video now and do them quick. You maybe have done them on a notebook, probably a great idea. I'm going to show you all the answers and maybe just show you uh, doing one of them. Boom. Okay, let's take a look at doing number 18. All right, and might not be showing exactly how I would do it because, again, I would rewrite the problem in my notebook. But what do I have to multiply 400 by to make it a whole number? I have to multiply it by 10, 100. That puts my decimal point there. If I multiply my divisor by 100 to keep it equivalent, I have to multiply my dividend by 100. So that's shifting each digit one, two to the left. That puts my decimal point here. All right. So actually, I'm going to rewrite it just because it just makes so much more sense. I now have 36 and four tenths. Oops. Sorry about that. Kind of one of the hazards of all this. Divided by four. So, actually, I know what 36 divided by four is. It's nine. Basic facts. Nine multiplied by four is 36. 36, if I took nine groups of four out of 36, I took 36 out, there's nothing left. Bring down my decimal point and the four. Four tenths divided by four. If I had four tenths, whoops, that was weird. If I had four tenths,
and I divided them by four. There would be one in each group, right? So I'm going to bring up my decimal point, and I said there's going to be one tenth in each group. One tenth multiplied by four would be one tenth multiplied by four would be four tenths. And since I used all four tenths, I have nothing left. All right. So rewatch that video if you have any of the other ones incorrect and follow that procedure as well. I'm going to get rid of Where's my eraser? I'm going to get rid of this so it's not in our way. All right. 21 and 22, if you didn't finish, 21 and checking understanding, if you haven't finished those yet, pause the video. A developer is building an amusement park on a rectangular lot. There's your rectangular lot. I always draw a rectangle when they talk about area or rectangles. With an area of 1 and 3,500 square miles. So the area goes on the, is this space inside this greenish area is 1 and 3,500 square miles. The length of one side of the lot is 45 hundredths of a mile. What is the length of the other side? So this would be the other side. So we know that area equals length multiplied by width. So my equation can be that area, 1 and 35 hundredths. Sorry about that. Thing goes wonky on me once in a while. 1 and 35 hundredths equals, let's say I know the length, 45 hundredths. multiplied by, I'm looking for the width, but knowing fact families, this is also equal to 1 and 35 hundredths divided by 45 hundredths. equals W. So let's take a look at their answer. They used the, this multiplying equation, but again, it could have been one and 35 hundredths. This is what we call a situation equation. Here is our solution equation. How would I solve this? I would take 1 and 35 hundredths and divide it by 45 hundredths, and they ended up with 3 miles. Okay, check for understanding. Draw a place value chart and use it to show how the digits for dividing a decimal by a decimal shift for both the divisor and the dividend. All right, so what you're going to have to do is draw a chart that has hundreds, ten, hun, thousands, hundreds, tenths, a decimal point, ones, tens, hundreds, for, and show it for dividing a decimal by a decimal shift for both the divisor and the dividend. And then show how, as you multiply by, let's say, both of them by a hundred, they both shift the same distance. All right. So finally, for an exit slip, how does the strategy for dividing a whole number by a decimal compare to the strategy for dividing a decimal by a decimal? 
So explain that, use good vocabulary. You can write that up either in your math log or you can write that, you can email it to, to us or somewhere else that you can communicate it. Maybe put it on Seesaw, just put Unit 5, Lesson 8, Exit Slip. I would type the question, how does the strategy for dividing a whole number by a decimal compare to the strategy for dividing a decimal by a decimal? And then your response. Great luck. Replay any part of this video as needed.